We are going to lead it off uh, with some news and notes from around the league, and we'll see when we get to the list. You know, it's F around Friday. We're going to do what we always do. Just going to F around. Um, yeah. First <laughs> thing I wanted to get to we didn't yesterday was the uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. He's going to D.C., Chuck. Uh, I especially liked your comment on Twitter about it. Like, all right, I guess he could help them do what they did this year. <laughs> like, they can be the eight seed, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what? Um, I think, honestly, more than anything, L.A., because the timing of the trade was very funny to me. The uh, series gets extended to a sixth game, the final. Of course, if it goes seven, they won't. Uh, L.A. would not have been able to buy out Pierre-Luc Dubois right. at one-third. It would have been the traditional... Two thirds, right? Because, uh, of the, like the because day he, he was turns born. Yeah. 26, I think, the day of game seven. And so the buyout window wouldn't open up until after he was 26. So funny. If it was a sweep, they could have like just bought him out and it's fine. Yeah. But now they're like, oh, shit. So they're, in, they're able to trade him and move on from that, what appears to be horrible I'm, contract. I'm blown away. And like the Kings bombed this trade. Like this is a terrible trade they did immediate. Not not this trade, but the initial one to get Pierre Luc Dubois. It like really in retrospect, went, it looks terrible. It really went poorly. For them. But I am shocked that they were able to get out of that contract. I'm no shocked. retention, just straight up one for one. And like, yeah, Kemper is not the he's not guy. Good. He's he's older. The that contract is not a good contract either. It's not as potentially franchise crippling as the Dubois contract. And I do give LA credit. Like I give Rob Blake and LA credit in that. Yes. That initial trade when they got Pierre Luc Dubois from, uh, from Winnipeg, terrible trade. You fucked it up. You blew it. However, I respect that they accepted. They, they screwed up quickly rather than being like, well, sunk costs, you know, we gave up all that much. We got it. We got to figure out how to unlock him. Instead, it was one year in, nah, this ain't going to freaking work. Nah. Let's cut bait while he still has at least some value. And I respect, because I will always, I'll always say that you're never going to have a GM who every single move they make is No, right. you make mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. But the really good GMs have the, they have the humility to, realize that they did make a mistake and then address it rather than convince themselves that no, that move was actually smart and it's all going to work out. If I just give it one more year, no, I give LA credit for saying, nah, that was dumb. We need to erase this as quickly as possible. Yeah. It's going to make the initial trade probably look worse, but you know, what would make the, that initial trade look even worse. If five years down the road, they're sending Pierre Luc Dubois down to the AHL yeah, like, because he's barely a player. We're putting him on waivers. Yeah. And no one's going to grab him because eight and a half mil for a 40 point player is a shit ton of money. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. You know, and that's uh, I saw in the comments a couple of days. I see we have super chats already. Uh, we, we will get to them. It's after on Friday. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 we can do the whole show of super chats, honestly. Um, but like I saw in the comments a couple of days ago when we were talking about Tolski. And someone was like, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit here and say Carolina is one of the best run organizations and then be like, Oh man, they're gonna just figure out a way to get out of this cock and the Emmy contract because it was a mistake. It's like maybe it was clearly. Hmm. Looks like it might have been. If they figure a way out of it, though, that's acknowledging like no one's no one bats a thousand. Yeah, it's it seriously can go real wrong. Like I mean, I always look back to the Paul Holmgren tenure, and it's like the first half, man, he killed it, and then it went real wrong. Well, I and just, then they yeah. refused to acknowledge exactly. the mistakes. They kept exactly. going. All right. Um, yeah, Luke Shen. Yeah, Nick Grossman. Yeah, like until it just became Andrew McDonald. Like, yeah. And it just became problem after problem to solve an initial thing that couldn't be solved. Well, like, like we lost Chris Pronger. Exactly. There ain't no replacing him. He's one of the best ever. Like, And the failure to recognize where you are as an organization, like the Kings. Yeah, did this make them better? No, but they had a problem yeah. and they have two problems. One. They're in a division with Connor McDavid. They keep running him into the, running into him in the playoffs, and that goes poorly for them. And two, they're paying this dude who might not like hockey all that much a shit ton of money. We can fix one of these problems. Yeah. We cannot fix Connor McDavid. <laughs> we can fix paying this dude eight and a half million dollars. They did. Well, I think two perfect examples of what happens when you make a mistake and then you double down on that mistake because you've decided that, well, it was a smart move, and it doesn't matter what everyone has seen. It was still a smart move. You mentioned Andrew McDonald. He's one. 
you trade for Andrew McDonald on an expiring contract because you want to beef up the defense and you think this guy is not a first pair defenseman, but he's a he's a two, three in a lower role. He'll do better. His underlying numbers in that initial burst with the Flyers were just as trash as they were in the major role with the Islanders. So what does Paul Holmgren do? He gives him a six-year, $30 million contract. You're doubling down on what was already a mistake rather than realizing after watching him, there's no way this guy is worth that much money. Let's just let's just accept that we probably overpaid for a rental and it didn't work out. Whatever. Fine. Another example, Rastafari Salinan. The initial trade, look, most of us knew that was a bad trade from the start. However, if you are Chuck Fletcher and you trade that much away for one Rastafari Salinan, then you spend the entire first season of him with the team. You have a chance to see him and you have a chance to see that he's not what you thought you bought because he's not that good. And then you sign him to the contract anyway. Like at some point you have to accurately evaluate what you're seeing rather than convincing yourself that what you want to see is what's actually happening. I just actually had this thought. Um, If they can trade Risto this off season, dope yeah cool. like that would be stupendous and he's been better since since torts took over he's been better than i expected him to be however he's still not worth the contract they gave him. absolutely not <laughs> not even close but i'm want like a team just took on the pld contract everyone needs big right-handed defensemen it's true we have seen rasmus or and in his time with buffalo put up offensive numbers Mostly by playing on the power play. Yeah, with Jack Eichel helps. The, the Flyers have a trash power play no matter what. Put him up top, and let's see if we can boost those numbers a little bit, see if he's a little bit more palatable to a uh, to a trade partner. Why not? What's the power play going to get? Worse? I, I, I just I don't know if he'd score on it. Like, I don't know if I it's going to... score sometimes. Would he? Igor Zabula scored a Did you watch little. the Flyers' power play this Igor past Zabula. year? They never score. <laughs> Igor Zabula had, like, two weeks where he looked good. What if that's the first two weeks of the season? <laughs> you know? What if he just has that the first couple of weeks? I guess I think you're you're overrating the ability of the Flyers' power play <laughs> to inflate anyone's numbers I, I at all. Like, say, like, you know, Forster's a little better. <laughs> Tippett's a little better. It's just... Morgan Frost is there from the day one, and he distributes. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out a way out of this thing, Charlie. Other oh, teams man. are figuring out a way out about bad contracts. We have a bunch, and that's something, I guess, Provorov, but that wasn't so much a bad contract as it just was like, we can't keep this guy. Yeah, this like, the is, team doesn't this like a toxic it. situation. The team doesn't like the dude who plays 25 minutes a night. We have to trade him. All right, let's All do right, the let's super chats super real quick. Chats these here. are both quick super chats. Okay. We got one from Gary B. Happy Friday, everybody. I may have jumped the gun, but I bought a Mitch Golf jersey. Yeah, Gary. Good job, Gary. Hope he keeps the number 39 when he comes over. I think there's a good chance he does. I always think um, it's a unique number that he, he can make his own. Even if he doesn't, I don't love it, but it is kind of unique. Um, I always think like if you have that and then he changes it, like that means you're in on the ground floor. Yeah. Like if you have a 34 Cliff Lee jersey, that's yeah, sick. That's true. Like, I got the Gossip Spare jersey right away. And everyone was like, yo, he's not keeping 53. <laughs> and then to his credit, he heard how many people bought his jersey. And he was like, I don't know. I had a pretty good year. I well, guess I'm keeping like it. One thing like that, too. And I would see this not as so much anymore because obviously he's not on the team anymore. But during the height of the Claude Drew era, once in a while, you would see someone someone with a number 56. Was it, yeah, yeah, And yeah. you'd be like, you know what? What was that from his that's two cool. game call up? Yep. Oh my god, like, that that's was, cool. When I he, respect it, he almost scored in that uh, in that shootout. That would have been something. Okay, now we um, got one. Just this is just a reference to the PLD discussion from Steve. Funny thing I saw yesterday: Caps bought cap friendly so that yeah. no one would make fun of them for the PLD contract. I think that was Ryan Gilbert. I think that was, was RG Tree. Ryan Gilbert. Yeah, friend of the pod, Ryan yeah. Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert commented on. Uh, on me advertising the big list of names. And I think he's going to be disappointed that someone didn't make it, but yeah, you know, there's only so many. I just went through the whole draft guide like three times uh, to pick out the best possible names and not everyone's going to make it, but RG tree is, I, uh, I wish I was as funny as him on Twitter. Like <laughs> I, I don't know how to be funny on Twitter. It's just something that eludes me. Just and something that eludes Ryan's me. tremendous at it. <laughs> We all city like the mayor. 